The police stopped us, and that's when the police told me that they were investigating me. He pulled me to the side and he said, we saw you running through the desert. And he said, when are you gonna be done with this? Jennifer McFerrin wasn't proud of what she'd become. At age 24, she was homeless, in an abusive relationship, and addicted to drugs. It was a far cry from the life she'd vowed to have when she was young. I was never gonna be like my mom, that I was never gonna let anybody abuse me, and that, um, you know, that I was gonna have a good life, and that I was gonna be an example to my family, but also to my children when I had children. That's because she'd had a rough childhood herself. Her mother and stepfather were drug addicts and thieves with six mouths to feed. A lot of times we didn't have food or bed or clothing. A lot of the places we lived had were roach infested and I personally didn't bring a lot of friends to my house because I didn't like the environment that we lived in. She didn't tell her friends that her home was a war zone either. When my dad would go on his drinking binges, he would get really violent and he would, um, he would beat up my mom. When her parents weren't fighting each other, they verbally attacked their kids. I always felt that I was a disappointment to my mom. I asked her why she named me Jennifer, and she said, I named you Jennifer because your name is common and you were common. The words stung. Then some relatives added even more to her pain. Three of them sexually abused her, and she ended up living with one for an entire year when she was just 12. When he started to uh, touch me and he started to kiss me, I just remember, I guess this is my lot in life, and just went with it. Jennifer says she felt like no one would care or believe her, so she kept silent. Meanwhile, she came up with a plan. I thought that if I would, could have a kid, then I would be able to generate the relationship that I was lacking in my life. They would love me and I would love them and I would not be like my parents and it would fill the void that I had. So at 16, Jennifer got pregnant. She had a son with one man, then a daughter with another. By now she'd left home and was living with a friend. She became pregnant a third time with a married man and had an abortion. Then just a little over a week later, Jennifer's best friend died from cancer. I just couldn't do life anymore. I was emotionally broken and I couldn't carry the weight of it anymore. She started drinking and using drugs to numb her pain. My goal when I started using was that I could just use until I died. She gave her daughter to the girl's birth father and later walked away from her son, leaving him with his grandmother. For the next six years, Jennifer stayed as high as she could. Much of the time, she was homeless and in and out of abusive relationships. I didn't like myself, I was disgusted, I felt ashamed, I had a lot of guilt. Um, Basically, the, the lifestyle that I ended up living kind of confirmed the things that my mom said about me. And I started to think, I didn't just become like my parents. I'm worse than them. In my mind, I did everything that I said I was never going to do. So I broke a promise to myself, but also to my kids. Jennifer began stealing things, like automobiles, to support her habit. Finally, after a police investigation, she landed in prison on charges of trafficking stolen property. She was released after a year and went to rehab. She couldn't stay sober, but desperately wanted a better life. I wanted peace and I wanted joy. I wanted to like myself. I wanted to be able to function a day in my life where I, w I wasn't fearful or worried or overwhelmed. So my other only option was to try God. I tried drugs, I tried myself, I tried to use my kids as a way to live, I tried to please everybody. And so my only other option was, I felt was really allowing God, really taking the time to find out who God is, not who I thought God was. So Jennifer called a friend who took her to a Christian rehab center. Even though she believed she needed God, she wanted to pick and choose which parts of the Christian faith she'd accept. Then after three months, Jennifer says the Lord spoke to her. He said, you serve me completely or you don't serve me at all. And I just, that's when I made the decision, I'm gonna serve you completely. The most important thing was the fact that I had to give over control and I had to give up the drugs. I had to give up a lot of things and I was very uncomfortable for a long time. Those were the things that defined me even if they were bad, but they were also the things that I used to keep me safe. 
As Jennifer memorized scriptures and got counseling, she grew in her faith. Over time, she learned to accept God's forgiveness, and she discovered her true identity. In Christ, I am loved and um, I'm complete. I'm victorious and I'm justified. I just am because God says I am. And that is where my peace is. Jennifer was able to forgive everyone who abused her, including her mother. You know, these people are hurt people and these people, you know, have lived through a lot of stuff. And so it was easier for me to forgive them. She finished rehab and married Matthew. Together, they have a son. Now, Jennifer is rebuilding relationships with her two oldest children, and she says it's all thanks to God. He's given me a life, and He's given me purpose. He's shown me love that nobody else can show me. There's nothing that you can do that Jesus won't forgive you for. That He's waiting for you to come to Him and say, I'm ready. I'm ready to start my life over in you.